26, 20. Draws um, a circuit with three capacitors and a battery. So capacitor here and a capacitor here. And then another branch, capacitor there, like that. This is C1, and it equals a 3C. Uh, C2 equals C. And uh, C3 equals 5C. So three different capacitors is just telling you that their values are uh, multiples of each other. Capacitance of 1C, 3C and 5C. So the first question, A, is um, what is the equivalent capacitance of this entire circuit? So what you essentially have is you just follow the path and you have a capacitor here and then it splits into two capacitors in parallel. So we have really then a series combination of this capacitor and this branch. Right? So we would say 1 over C equivalent, because this is a series, we would say it's 1 over C1 plus 1 over, and then whatever this branch's equivalent capacitance is. Well, a parallel branch is, um, a capacitor is the easy kind where you just add them. So this would be 1 over C2 plus C3. So this one we can sort of do in all one step, because it's really just one series and one parallel. And for the parallel, you just add. So that's what it would look like. So it would be uh, 1 over C1 is 1 over 3C plus 1 over C2 plus C3 is 6C. And what is that? Uh, we multiply this by 2 over 2 to get a common denominator. That's 6C, 6C, so 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's 3 over 6C. But of course, that's 1 over the equivalent capacitance. And if we invert it, we see that the equivalent capacitance is just 6C over 3 is 2. So I'll write it down here. C E Q equals 2C. So that was part A. Part B and C, I like to do um, at the same time. So this is B and C. Because it asks to rank the three capacitors by their charge and to rank them by their uh, voltage drop. So you can sort of argue and word your way around each one without doing any equations, but I think it's better to do a little bit of math uh, to show it more clearly. And in doing that, you sort of do it at the same time. So the first thing you would always ask yourself is what is the total charge that's going to come out of the battery? So I usually call that Q bat. And to do it this way mathematically, we have to give, we have to assume an EMF. So we don't need it numerically, this isn't really a numerical problem. But we can assume the battery puts out some uh, EMF, which we'll just call E. So Q bat is just uh, the kind of equivalent capacitance times the EMF. Right? So it's, um, it's always just the EMF times the equivalent capacitance, or in this case it's 2C times the EMF. 2CE. That's how much charge is going to come out of the battery. That means that's the charge that's going to have to build up on C1 because this one is by itself. So this charge comes out here, you get plus 2CE there, minus 2CE there. So we've already answered one question. Q1 equals 2CE. Uh, if we know that, we can also get the voltage drop across C1. Uh, delta V1 uh, CV equals Q, uh, so it's just its charge Q over its capacitance, which capacitance for C1 is 3C, so it's 2CE over 3C, okay, which is 2 thirds E. All right. So all we did is we figured out, you know, did the equivalent circuit to get the charge, and now we're just applying it to a single element. So there's Q1 and delta V1. Uh, what else do we know? Well, once we know the voltage drop across 1, if the total voltage drop is E, and if we drop 2 thirds of that E across C1, then it must drop the other third across that branch, across those parallels. Right? The potential here has to be the same as the potential here. And by here, we're down to 0. So we already then know that delta V2 
2 equals delta v 3 equals all that's left is 1 third e. Okay. All right. And if we know those delta v's, then we also know the capacitances. Uh, Q, let's see, it'll say Q2 is just C times V. All right, so uh, the C for Q2 is C, and the V, the delta V is one third E, so it's just uh, one third C E. And you start to compare up here, Q, this one was two C E, this holds a lot less charge, one third C E. And then Q3, again, Q is just C V, and the capacitance is five C. Uh, times one third e, so that's five third c e. Right. So we've actually worked out the entire circuit, all the capacitances, all the voltages, all the current, or all the charges. So now the question was to put them in order from greatest to least. So in terms of q, here we have two c e, uh, here we have a third c e, here we have five third c e, which is a little bit less than two. So it goes q one is greater than Q3 is greater than Q2. And then for delta V's, uh, this one was two-thirds and these were one-third, so it's delta V1 is greater than delta V2, which equals delta V3. And then part D. Part D, yes, so the question for part D is if C3 were to get even larger, make it 10C or 1000C or whatever. When C3 goes up, what happens to the charge on each of the other capacitors? Okay. So let's think, what would happen? So we had a, a network of capacitors here. We have this capacitance, and in series we have this capacitance. If this one goes up, the equivalent capacitance of these two in parallel will go up. Right? It's just the sum of the two. Okay. So 3 goes up, these two go up. If this goes up with this, goes up in series, the total capacitance still goes up, even though they're in series. Even though they're added as their inverses, the total can't go down, it just can only get so high. But it does still go up. So if the total capacitance of the circuit goes up, more charge is going to flow out. And for a constant V, more capacitance means it holds more charge. Therefore, that charge has to go up, because C1 holds all the charge coming out of the battery. If it holds an amount equivalent to the amount that comes out of the battery. So Q1 must increase. And let's see, so, um, and then we have whatever voltage is left across our branch here, uh, and if we have uh, a constant voltage across uh, these two, then this one will have to go up, and then this one will have to go down, because this one will take more of the charge from that one. So Q1 will have to increase, Q3 will increase, because it will take charge from Q2, will decrease it, that's it.